Let's take a look at how to do a P chart. Uh, first up, let's take a look at the data. I've opened the file called Patient Form Submissions Discrete. The column called N denotes how many patient forms were submitted that day. We have 20 days worth of data, 59 came in on day 1, 49 on day 2, etc. The pass column tells us how many of those submissions were perfect. All the fields were filled out, plus everything was legible. Failure is where we had some kind of rework. Either a field was missing, or we couldn't read the patient's handwriting. So let's do a p-chart on this. It's very simple. First, I make sure that we have our cursor somewhere in this table. Next, we'll go up to Control Charts, Attribute Charts. We'll do a p-chart. We'll select the entire table and hit Next. In this case, we could either study the percentage of failures or the percentage of pass. And you might remember the formula for yield was good ones over total. So let's look at the percentage that passed. We'll be optimistic in our analysis. And the end column is the subgroup size for each day. I'm turning on tests for special causes. However, this will blow up on us in a moment. I'll show you why. We hit OK. And you can see that we get a little error message. It says, tests for special causes will not be performed because control limits are not constant. We'll see that in a moment. Just punch OK. And here is your p-chart. This looks distinctly different than any other control chart that we've run. Notice the wavy control limits on this. Now, because the alarm system has been turned off. We will get no red numbers here. But here's how to read this chart. The center line tells us that we have 58.8% of the forms submitted on average that are perfect. Remember, we're looking at good ones here. Now, up here for the upper control limit, we cannot assume that the upper control limit is always 78.3%. If you hover over that segment of the line, you'll see that the number here is for the last segment of that line. If you hover over another segment, you'll see that that number is different. Here it's 82.4%. Why is this? Why do we get this wavy effect? Just like any other control chart, the control limits are calculated at plus or minus three standard deviations. However, guess what goes into the calculation of a standard deviation? That's right, the sample size. So if your sample size varies with every observation, so will the control limits. It will give you this wavy kind of feature. Now because we turned off the alarm system, all we can do here is eyeball this. Test one, do we see any points outside of the control limits? No, we do not. Test two, do we see nine or more points in a row on either side of the center line? We do not. Test three, do you see six or more points in a row continually going up or down? We do not. Test four, do we see 14 or more points in a row alternating up and down in a sawtooth fashion? We do not. Therefore, we conclude that this process is stable and in control. Now, if we wanted to do this using the Control Chart Assistant, we could do that. Let's demonstrate it. We'll go back to Sheet 1. We'll go to Control Chart, Control Chart Selection Tool. And on this, we have discrete or attribute data. We're looking at defect divs. Our subgroup size is not constant. It varies. Therefore, it drops us down to a p-chart. When we punch OK, We'll ask it for the entire table, hit Next, and we're right back to where we were before. Uh, we'll ask for Pass. We'll put in N for subgroup. We know these tests will not work for us. Punch OK, and you get the exact same P-chart. And that is your new friend, the P-chart.